the Midweek Throwdown this week. Um, we got a couple of weird topics to talk about today. You want to go first, or you want me to go first? Oh, go ahead. You can go first. All right. Well, I have today to talk about some uh, outdated or absurd sports traditions that you see. First one is the eye black used in football games. You know, when they streak up their eyes. and It used to be when it first started, it was used to keep the sun out of their eyes, keep the glare out. But with technology and stuff, how it's came along so far, I don't think it's really necessary anymore, do you? You know, I, I never knew really what the eye black was for. I, I played football, and not that the glare was ever mm -hmm. a huge issue from where I stood, but when you're face down looking at the turf <laughs> most of the time, there usually isn't a lot of glare. But no, I, I didn't know what the, what the eye black was. Well, yeah, was. it was originally supposed to keep the glare out of, out of their eyes when the sun was shining, but then it got to players with per personal messages on there and Bible they, they quotes. They take streak it down exactly. their face down and stuff. I, I, that's supposed to be more of an intimidation thing. I guess thing so. Though. Like Ray Lewis always had it all over his face. I remember seeing... Well, to me, that says crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Another one is uh, celebrity first pitches at baseball games. Isn't that about the most embarrassing thing you have ever seen? It is. And anymore, you get like these D and E and F list celebrities out there doing it. Like Kathy, like, Kathy Griffin. Yeah. Or, uh, Kathy Griffin throwing out the, the first pitch at a Toledo Mud Hens game. Who was the one? Uh, Carly Rae Jepsen had a first pitch throw at the Tampa Bay Rays game. And she just totally biffed it. I mean, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna do this, you don't need to do it every game or every month. Make it a special occasion when you actually get a big celebrity in there and practice with them beforehand. My goodness. Now, on on a political note, uh, President Obama has thrown out the first pitch several times, and and he actually has some athleticism. Mm -hmm. It was this spring he kind of kind of cranked one down. It just. <laughs> it, I mean, it got there, got to the plate, was almost a strike. Was a decent pitch. Um, George Bush, George W. Bush, mm -hmm. who used to be owner of the Texas Rangers, he did a uh, ceremonial first pitch well, when he was in office and like six hopped it to home plate. <laughs> so now, I, I don't get the whole no. ceremonial first pitch thing. What, what's that all about? I, I really don't get what that's it all about. It probably had its roots in something good and great, but now it's just, I don't think it's needed anymore. Who, who do you think would be a good choice to throw out a first pitch? Who in your mind? Well, I think it should be somebody from, uh, like, that city, somebody famous from that city that everybody knows, something to relate back to that town or that should it Should it be a celebrity? Team. Should it be a former athlete? Should it be somebody who's done something great and, and wonderful, like the Dalai Lama or <laughs> Gandhi? I think as long as it's somebody that everybody recognizes and everybody knows... doesn't happen very often but when I do it's like you just get into it and then the seventh thing stretch happens and then it just drags on and on and on. Well you know what what the basis for that was don't you because baseball on itself is a long game mm -hmm. and you can sit there a really <laughs> long time and, and, and theoretic by the time the seventh inning got around you know people needed to get up and stretch but you know Baseball only goes nine innings, so... That's what I mean. Why not move it up to, like, the fifth or something halfway through the game? I don't, I don't the they have the four-and-a-half-inning yeah. stretch. Instead of, like, right towards the end of the game. And the last one I have is the Gatorade shower. Now, I remember back when this first kind of started, kind of big thing, 
they did it like only with your really big wins, like your bowl games, your championships, and what have you. And now it seems like if you beat your rival, you get a Gatorade shower. If you win the division, you get a Gatorade shower. It seems like everything comes with a Gatorade shower. What's the, what's the purpose of that now? Just celebration of some sort. To take the coach and, and basically dump something that looks like a bucket of cold urine <laughs> over his head? Well, there was a thing up in, I think it was Norfolk this past winter, <clears throat> where the uh, some community college basketball indoors... Had a Gatorade show. Yeah. That's always great on a basketball court. And the coach court. slipped and fell, and then somebody was trying to go down and help them, and then they <laughs> slipped and fell. And... I'm wondering about sports mascots. And uh, I did some research, and this is according to the Bleacher Report, I did some research on the creepiest mascots in sports. Oh, no. This could be <clears> and there's, a whole, there's a whole list of them, but I, I narrowed it down to the top 10 creepiest mascots. And number 10, there is Saluki. Of Southern Illinois. Now, a Saluki by nature is is a is a dog, mm -hmm. a very kind of a pristine looking dog. But but the Saluki of Southern Illinois, he kind of looks like Wile E. Coyote on. He crack. does a little bit. Yeah, he looks like Wile E. Coyote on crack. And uh, the definition here is Southern Illinois Saluki looks more like a hellish badger weasel <laughs> that stalks country roads and feeds on drifters. I can see that. Yeah, the creepiness level for this guy is dead tooth. Not to be confused with dead leg. The number nine creepiest mascot in sports <laughs> is Pistol Pete from Oklahoma State. Uh, the definition is nothing quite says don't turn around boy like the weather hardened face of a criminal turned cowboy. Creepiness level, room full of old tiny dolls. <laughs> yeah. Number eight. Oh my. Number eight is Friar Dom of the Providence Friars. I, I personally think he looks like a child molester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it reads, there are levels of creepiness to Friar Dom <laughs> that can't exactly be excavated on this slideshow. But suffice to say, having a baby-faced priest figure traipsing the sidelines isn't a comforting sight. The creepiness level is wet handshake with a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is Bolt Man from the San Diego Chargers. And it's kind of set to a musical tune. It says, Bolt Man, ah, eater of the children, ah, champion of the storm, ah, he's going to kill you and serve you to everyone. <laughs> Bolt Man might be an unofficial mascot, but that doesn't stop him from possessing the creepiness of three team licensed mascots. Creepiness level is sobs intermixed with carnival music. <laughs> Number six, Sammy the Slug from the University of California, Santa Cruz. And basically, Sammy looks like a snail without a shell. It says, Sammy the Slug, guys, he represents UC Santa Cruz banana slugs, and he's here to ruin your sense of personal safety. <laughs> Creepiness level, Richard Simmons. Kind of reminds me of a Teletubby. It does look like a Teletubby, which is a whole other yeah. topic for a different show. Um, number five is Sebastian from the University of Miami. He's, uh, is he a duck or is he an eagle? He looks like a duck. He kind of looks like a duck, doesn't he? And, and the statement says, don't look at me that way, Sebastian. Don't look at anyone that way. <laughs> he looks very angry. Level of creepiness is empty wheelchair knocked over in the street. I can, I can see Sebastian. Yeah. Here. Um, number four creepiest mascots in sports is Purdue Pete from the University of Purdue. The only time Purdue Pete puts a smile on someone's face is when he's lowering a basket to her in his basement. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing in Purdue Pete's face but emptiness. There's no smile, no gladness in the eyes, nothing. This is a face of a man who goes to horrifying lengths to feel emotions. Creepiness yeah. level. The sound of clown shoes on the roof, which, I mean, you know, that strikes fear in me anyway with, with, with a clam. Uh, the number three creepiest mascot is Sparky the Sun Devil from Arizona State. And, and if you look at his face, he's, he's kind of this demon guy with a pitchfork. Uh, got a little pencil thin mustache, got horns. And it says, uh, yes, go to sleep. You're a very tired girl. <laughs> I'm not saying Sparky the Sun Devil is sitting on a branch outside your window right now, but you might want to check. <laughs> Creepiness level, 
the killer you think is hiding behind your shower curtain. Now this I, I find this one amazingly creepy. It's called Wu Shock from Wichita State. Now Wichita State is the shockers, mm -hmm. and if you're not from a farm background, a shocker is kind of a, a stand of wheat that you put out in the field that has, has rope or twine around it so it dries in the sun. So it's Wu Shock. There's nothing comforting about Wu Shock, a Frankenstein bundle of wheat that terrorizes the sideline of Wichita games. It does kind of look like Frankenstein. It does kind of look like Frankenstein. What does it want from us? Why does it hate smiling at the world? <laughs> Can we appease it by offering human sacrifices? We may never know. Creepiness level. Child smiling in front of a house on fire. <laughs> and uh, the number one creepiest mascot in sports is Mad Ant. Mad Ant. From Fort Wayne, Mad Ant. Fort Wayne's in Indiana. Um, and he's basically an ant in a basketball uniform. <laughs> and, and it reads, you gonna get chased. The Mad Ant is the official mascot of Fort Wayne Mad Ants. It's less of a mascot, however, and more of a grinning menace to society. It motivates the team and crowd through naked fear. Creepiness level, Busey Bugs. So I'm assuming <laughs> that's a reference to Gary Busey yeah. in some form. So wow. I just I just wanted to, uh, you know, found that, found that little bit of tidbit this week, kind of off the wall stuff. Kind of a comforting that Little Red didn't make the list. Well, you know, yes, Little Red did not make the, make or the Herbie top ten. No, I, I find Herbie, well, I don't find Herbie as, as creepy as Little Red. I think that's all I have for this week. That's all I got, too. Thank you for tuning in. Yes, thank you. Have a good day.